Good afternoon, Poggy Sports. Welcome to another VC Battle Stadium Regulation C video, bring you a Hall Lucha team. Now, this isn't just any Hall Lucha team. This team was brought to EUIC and ended up getting top 100 in EUIC by Francisco Corrado. We'll leave a link to their Twitter down below in the description. Decided to go ahead and bring Hall Lucha to an international championship and did surprisingly well, right? I'm impressed to say the least, but Kalucha's not not a horrible Pokemon by any means, but it's not meta. But what's cool about Halucha is the fact that the meta just became four ruinous Pokemon not too long ago, and Halucha is one of the fastest and hardest hitting fighting type Pokemon in the current metagame. That plus the added benefit that Halucha cannot get hit by a fissure. So Halucha with the Unburdened Psychic Seed boost, thanks to the Ndidi, allows it to be ridiculously fast. That plus the benefit of getting Acrobatics boosted to base 110 stab is very scary. So I'm excited and I'm curious as to why more people aren't using it, but I want to see what the heck it's going to do in today's video. Along with the rest of the team, we have a lot of good Pokemon to like round out the composition. We have things like Flutterman with Booster Energy, things like Arcanine. We have the Titar, which I think is Sleeper, because Titar is great if you encounter the random Armor Rouge and DD Psy Spam team. Not very common nowadays, but sometimes you will encounter a team of just like, you know, the Fluttermane, Amoongus, Arcanine, and Palafin Core with just Armor Rouge and DD in the, in the back. Just in case you don't lead with the Palants, you go with Armor Rouge and DD. There is options for Armor Rouge and DD still. Um, so T-Tar deals with those. Also, T-Tar just melts sashes away, so there's you can never ignore that fact. Also, Sandy Shocks. A little bit surprised to see Sandy Shocks here, because I don't think it's as good as it once was, but I want to be proven wrong. Let's see. Anyway, if you guys are excited to see Hall here on the channel, go ahead and hit the like button down below and subscribe to Pokesports if you haven't done so already. With that said, let's get on to today's video. Dozo Tatsugiri. Kind of worried. I'm not so sure how this team fares against the Dozo Tatsugiri, especially since I can't Swords Dance my way up to plus two. But overall, like the rest of the the rest of my opponent's side of the field, I can deal with. Maybe not the Dragonite so much, but I could deal with everything else except for Dozo Tatsugiri. And I think if I'm up against Dozo Tatsugiri, maybe I want things like Fluttermane to help with that special attack damage. Also have sub up on this Fluttermane could come in handy tyranitar could be nice for breaking sashes there's a lot of pokemon on that team that could carry a sash also breaks multi-scales yeah t-tar might be pretty legit what if i go like t-tar sandy shocks in the back that seems like a pretty good four to take care of don dozo tatsugiri the sandy shocks does electric damage to don dozo which you know don dozo's lowest stat other than its speed is its special defense so i could try to take advantage of that and also, I, I can deal with the Glamour a little bit better when I have the, the Sandy Shocks on my team. I also said at the beginning of this video, I wanted Sandy Shocks to impress me. So this is the opportunity for Sandy Shocks to do so. Flumora, Lumiflora, and Iron Bundle. I'll be honest, I don't hate this. I will actually be faster than this Iron Bundle, which is also funny to me. I'm pretty sure that my Unburden boost will make me faster than Iron Bundle with Cork Drive, right? I can only hope. I think it will. Fingers crossed. Unburden is times two, booster energy is times 1.5, so. And since we know it's booster energy, that means it's not Sash. So I think what we do here is just follow me. I want a Swords Dance so bad, but I also know that's not optimal. So let's just follow me in close combat. Eisen bundle. That's unfortunate, but thankfully it wasn't a high jump kick. Could have been a lot worse. Now, if I swords dance there, that would have been the optimal play. Oof. Unfortunate. I was too greedy by not being greedy enough. All right, they just go for the mortal spin. All right, all that's doing is chipping my side of the field and critting my NDD apparently. I think instead of going for follow me, I have to double check and see if there's anything on their team that wants to take a close combat. I don't believe there is. Let's see. Maybe Dragonite. 
Wouldn't appreciate it. But I'm pretty sure I'm going for the exact same play. Let's see. Just go straight for the bundle. I'm pretty sure I outspeed. If they want to switch into something to take that close combat, be my guess. As long as it's not Dragonite. Nope, they're not switching to anything. Deleted from the game, baby. Good job, Halucha. All right, that's great. Now, if my Ndidi does connect here, which should, that means that I get a free Psychic and Psychic Terrain onto the Ndidi. I mean, onto the Glamora. I live the Power Gem, too. That screams Assault Vested to me if it didn't click Protect there, though. Yeah, it's Assault Vested. Maybe. Maybe. It feels Assault Vested. But all Assault Vested means is I get a pretty free opportunity to just attack it next turn, and I'll be fine. Let's see what they actually go into. If it's Dondozo Tatsuki in the back, I'm concerned. For obvious reasons. Hirashi. Hirashi? It's Dondozo. Uh, yeah. This can be problematic. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to prep for my backline. I'm going to click Trick Room, and I know this seems stupid, but I promise uh, I'm, I'm thinking about this a lot. Yeah, I'm going to click Trick Room. I'm going to go for Close Combat on Dondozo, just because a Tatsugiri swap seems a little obvious. Especially since they, what, what reason would they have to lose their Glamoury here for no reason? They might as well just switch it out into Tatsugiri, get the Dozo set up, and then start attacking with Dozo. Oh. Well, I was wrong. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. This is bad. They don't swap at all. Okay. Uh, doesn't matter because in the end, I still lose my Halucha, but it means my Halucha wasn't able to do anything before going down, which kind of sucks for me. And also, I'm about to set Trick Room and then swap in something that's probably faster than this Dozo. Dang. Okay. Don't get me wrong, that sucks a lot, but I do have Protect to play around it. Let me just go into Sandy Shocks for now. Let's see if I can bait this uh, Glamora out. Let me go for the Follow Me. I'm considering just flying Terra, assuming they're going to start going for EQs. Flying Terra T-Bolt seems like the play. I just hope they're not like a ground Terra Dondozo or anything. Okay, there's the swap that I was looking for last turn. So I do bait them for the swap, which means this Dondozo will now be plus two. Whether or not it outspeeds my Sandy Shocks in Trick Room, I have no idea. But the Flying Terra should keep me safe from an EQ. This could still go horribly wrong. <laughs> But I think we are still in contention for this battle. It's still anyone's battle. Which feels better than what that last turn felt like. Alright, we got balloon shocks. The twirling balloons, baby. Now let's see what the speed tiers tell us. That followed me was just in case the Glamour was on the field still. Oh, I am next. That's huge. Oh, that is good damage. That is hilariously good damage. EQ, not today. Not today at all. That trick room was nice. That trick room was too good. All right, they're going to go for probably protect for the left. Is recover next turn. I wish I had like a stat increasey move. But alas, I don't. And I'm also going to be chipping myself with life orb and sand chip. It's not the greatest news, if I'm gonna be honest. So I might as well swap in Titar. This next turn doesn't matter. It's gonna be a wasted turn. It's gonna be me attacking to nobody. So let's just rock slide and T bolt. We'll see if they decide to terrestrialize. They do have that option too. They still have the option of terrestrializing, that's right. Do they? What do they do? They led with Glamora. What did I knock out turn one? 
Glamour Iron Bundle. No one terrestrialized. Yeah, they definitely have the option of terrestrializing. Which means I should change my moves up. Oh, yeah, I should change my moves up. I can't fall into that kind of bait. But I wonder what I changed them to. It kind of all depends on what the Terra is, right? Is it flying? Is it grass? If it's grass, it doesn't matter what I do. Okay, I think I'll go for Crunch. And I'm just going to go for... Ooh, I have Terra Blast. I believe. It's going to Grass Terra. It's going to Terra something. Which is why I can't T-Bolt again. There's a terrestrialization. Okay. Now, what's it going to be is the question. Grass. Show me grass. Yes. Terra flying Sandy Shocks, baby. Okay, Sandy Shocks is impressing me. I said Sandy Shocks would have to impress me in today's video. It's currently impressing me right now. Unfortunately, the crunch goes first, which means I won't get an attack off on Tatsugiri this turn, but I might be able to get one next turn, so it'll work out, hopefully. All right, Terra flying Terra Blast. More than enough to knock out the knock out the dozo. Now I have a little Tatsugiri and a Glamora to worry about. Thankfully, I didn't hit the, the, the Glamora with any spikes or anything. So my side of the field is not poisoned, so they can't just stall me out here. I'm also hoping that this Tatsugiri is like scarfed or something. Because then I, that means I have a couple more turns of trick room to take advantage. Take advantage of it. The thing with this Glamora is that I feel I need to knock it out, but I don't need to knock it out immediately. How many turns of this trick room do I have left? One final turn of trick room. Okay, I think I'm going to go for the Tatsugiri then. Can Glamora one-shot my Sandy Shocks? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, I'm flying Terra. Hold up. Yes, I can. Let me protect first. I'm just going to take a turn to protect. We'll see who goes next. Should be my T-Tar. Nice. Easy, easy Oko. I was expecting that to do a lot less. I'm glad that did as much as it did. Energy ball now. Oh, into my T-Tar spot. But too bad I'm in the sand, dude. T-Tar is not moving from this spot, baby. All right. Twisted Dimension return to normal. All that's left. Why would I click Rock Slide? All that's left is a Crunch and an Earth Power and a GG, folks. Get out of here. Oh, beautiful. That Trick Room setup was literally all I needed from that Indeedy. And then Sandy Shocks was able to carry me throughout the rest of the game there. I definitely made the right decision on my final two. What a nice match. What a great way to start the video, too. GG's Mia. Holy Gen 1. Arcanine, Dragonite, Gyarados... Don fan. <laughs> Not really. Great Tusk, Iron Hands, and Flutter Mane. All right. I don't love what I'm seeing. But I simultaneously don't hate what I'm seeing. Because Hallucha and Didi actually do a lot of work here. I think maybe a Flutter Mane in the back is going to be necessary. But I am concerned about this... I was going to say I am concerned about this Arcanine and this Dragonite until I looked at Sandy Shocks and realized, why would I be concerned? Uh, the Hallucha lead might be a little bit rough, though. Especially, I didn't consider those double Intimidators until right now, so. Maybe I just do Indeedee and Fluttermane. Bring Hallucha in the back and bring Sandy Shocks in the far back. That way, I can take care of those Intimidators before I lose my attack step. Before I can get Intimidate spammed. Unfortunately, I don't have a Defiant Mon on this team. It is what it is, but... Hopefully, Hallucha can still sign. Uh, sign. Shine. There you go. Eyes in hand and Arcani. Going against a lot of German players today. We went against Eyes in Bundle. Now it's Eyes in hand. All right, there's the Intimidate that we predicted turn one. Nice to see it. Now, my Ndidi could still do a lot here, actually. Especially against Eyes in Hand. I think the fake out is impossible. 
It's very unlikely Eisen Hand has Protect, but I think I'd much rather click Substitute here. And follow me. Let's try to get a sub up very safely with this Flutter main. Let's take advantage of Sub Flutter. So I don't think my opponent has the tools to deal with my Flutter main right now. Especially next to my DD. Alright, subs going up. Good luck, opponent. I am now a little right on. Alright, they're gonna flare blitz straight into my DD, which takes that very well. Burns me, but hey, I'll take it. Now I can only assume that. Yeah, also wild charge. Although that sucks. I can now get a free switch into anyone that I want. And I think Sandy Shocks is the play right now. Because Sandy Shocks can hit both these mons for super effective damage. So, could just take advantage of that. I'm going to take this opportunity to Moonblast into Eyes in Hand. And this might look crazy. I'm going to Thunderbolt into Arcanine. And the reason why I, I want to do that is because I, I believe there's a Gyarados in the back that's going to switch into right about now. Predicting the uh, ground move to go into that spot. Show it to me. Dragoran? That sounds like Gyarados. No, nah, it's Dragonite. Which still does mean I made the right play. So I'm not mad about that. It's nice to know that there is a Pokemon that I made that play for in the back. I didn't waste that turn. Got rid of multi-scale. Got some damage off on the Dragonite. Unfortunately, got some damage off on me as well. And they have EQ. Oh, you're kidding me, Tom. Can I take one? I do take one. I also have Flying Terra. Which means it's not over. Since I have Flying Terra, I can Moonblast. And they can't go for E-Speed because of the Psychic Terrain. I'm going to fly. Ah, do I even have to Flying Terra? Not yet. I can hold it. The Moonblast should be enough to knock out the Dragonite. I'm just going to go for a straight Earth Power onto Eyes in Hand. Get rid of that this turn. Withdraw his Eyes in Hand. Okay. Do they also have Drag... Uh, do they also have Gyarados here? No, they go back in Arcanine. Okay, so this is a great, great damage into Arcanine this turn. That I will definitely take. Again, and I still get to hold my Terra too. Oh, unfortunately, they're going to Terrastalize. Probably into normal here. Maybe into just flying. Into normal. You can't hit me, though. So hopefully they forget that I have Psychic Terrain on the field. Greedy. <laughs> nice. My opponent's colorblind. Can't see the color pink. Oh, but it lives. Kind of scary. Big Earth Power, too. Okay. I should still have Psychic Terrain for a couple more turns. I do still have Sandy Shocks nice and healthy here. Looking pretty good. Let's see if they show me what their last is. Like, I don't want to see just Eyes in Hand again. Fluttermane. No, I'm Booster Energy, though. So are they. Two more turns of Psychic Terrain. I wish I could hit them both, but I can't. So I'm just going to Shadow Ball into Flutter Main. Maybe I click Water Terror here. Yeah, let me... Let me Water Terror Shadow Ball into Flutter Main. Let me just protect Sandy Shocks and see if they take the swap out. I have a feeling they might be choice locked. Especially if they're like norm a normal Terra. Nah, it looks like they stayed in, so they might not be choice locked. Alright, Water Terra Flutter. Impress me. The good news is we know that they can't terrestrialize with their Flutter main, so this should just be a super effective hit. And I protected first, that means the Flutter main's not protecting. Beautiful. All right, they won the speed tie, so already off to a bad start. I take it, though. Thanks to the, the terrestrialization, I take it. Nice! It's enough to knock out. That's huge. 
What does a Dragonite do? Ice Spinner? Beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. Okay. I'm still in this. I am still in this. I think the only thing... The only thing that I have to do... Is attack. Actually, no. I have to sub up. And I have to Earth Power Eyes in hand. They tried to fake out on second terrain. That's twice you forgot, Tom! Color pink! That's twice! <laughs> oh no! My poor opponent, man. It is not their day. Eyes in hand, knocking them out. Goodbye, eyes in hand. Halu's just not even getting a chance to play here. Still living at 5 HP. Let's see what Dragonite decides to do. Outrage! Oh, he's locked now. Here's the issue, though. The terrain's gonna go away before I can get my Halucha in on the field, right? Yeah. So I'm never gonna get the Psychic Seed boost that I wanted, but I do believe Halucha just naturally outspeeds. And it's now becoming a 2v1, and I'm hiding behind a sub with the Flutter main, so it should be game no matter what happens. Moonblast, Acrobatics, GG's. Beautiful. Taking game two already, nice. I mean, this game was a little questionable with like the whole Psychic Terrain thing. I'll be honest. But hey, I'll take what I can get. Especially when I'm using Halucha. Halucha did not use a single move in that battle, but hopefully this third battle will get a little more of a Halucha so showcase. What are the odds Halucha faces Halucha on the ranked ladder? What are the actual odds? And guess what I was talking about? Four normal Pokemon and DDR Rouge in the back. <laughs> okay. Um, honestly, I'm I'm go I'm gonna hold the Halucha at least for now. If I'm seeing in DD Armor Rouge, I have to prepare myself for in DD Armor Rouge at least a little bit. So I think I'm gonna go Hall Lucha Titar, bring my own in DD in the back, so I could always hard swap into something when I need to, and probably just the late game flutter. I'm terrified of this bundle. Oh, I'm so dumb. This is just going to be Psy Spam right away with Bundle. Oh, it's weak armor. Okay. Well, at least now that I now I know that, but I should have led better. The T-Tar might have not been the play if that was the case. That means I should have led with the NDD. Oh, I didn't do that. Oh, they didn't do it. Nice. Oh, they could. They could still like U-turn onto a Psychic Terra, right? Still an option for them. Okay, so let's just be faster than their U-turn, right? Let's go, Ndidi. Let's... Do we bother Fire Terra? No. Let's just go for the Acrobatics onto the Annihilate. Yeah, let's do that. I'm a little scared of, like, a Trick Room, but this... this this 170% feels like either a final gambit lead or a U-turn into myself proc weakness policy type thing with a Terra on the Armor Rouge. I guess we'll see right now. All right, I got my Psychic Seed going. My goal here is to stop the weakness policy proccing, which I do. Nice. Whew, Annihilate is gone. I lost no Pokemon for it. I'm probably still getting Expanding Forced. Don't get me wrong. Yes, I am. But I can go back into T-Tar now. I stopped the way that they proc their weakness policy, which is all that I really care about at the moment. Because if I go back into T-Tar, they have nothing for me. So, Halucha, you served a purpose. And I'm happy that you did so. They have their own Halucha now, okay. Here we go, baby. But I have a secret tech that I think even my opponent isn't ready for. I have Terra Blast. So let's go for the follow me here. Let's go for the Fairy Terra Terra Blast onto Halucha. Let's hope that's enough. To one, keep my T-Tor alive. And two, scare my opponent out of the Armor Rouge. The problem is by me terrestrializing here, I'm also just giving my opponent the opportunity to hit me with Expanding Forces. So hopefully I'm not punished too much for this. We'll see. Okay, it looks like they're not switching, which, which is a little scary. But I do now have a heart on my head. 
Let's see if my opponent falls for the bait. No, they don't, man. Oh, no. This is going to be bad. This is going bad. Do they just expanding force again? What do they do? Aura Sphere. Oh, here we go. Well, they definitely will expanding force next turn. Aura Sphere won't do anything to me now. Um... If I can get Trick Room up, I have to get Trick Room up. That is the only out I'm seeing right now. Now they just saw the Fairy Terra Blast too. Let's Trick Room. And let's just fire off a Crunch into Arm Rouge. We're going to keep the Halucha on the field. Just because Halucha is just like the fastest thing in existence right now. So in Trick Room, I should be able to deal with it later on. Yeah, it's going to Terrestrialize here. Goes into the Fire Terra. Just so it's not weak to that Terra Blast anymore. Thankfully, we didn't do the same thing twice. All right, acrobatics into my poor Indeedy. Ugh, it's not good. And expanding forest, also not good. I should take one though. How I'm knocking out this Armourge, I have no idea. I mean, not Armourge, uh, Halucha. I do have booster energy flutter main, but I still believe Halucha is faster than even that. Not only that, but flutter main also doesn't have a super effective stab against it anymore. And indeed he's coming out. Oh boy. Nah, I think I lost this one. I am pretty sure I lost this one. I mean, hey, let's try to play it out, but I'm pretty sure that's that's the end of the rope for us. Again, because Halucha is faster. I could set up sub, but there's no point. I'd rather get my attacks off. And maybe if my T-Tar can live this turn, I'll be set. Oh, they helping hand boost. They're going for T-Tar is what that means. If they helping hand boost, they're definitely going for T-Tar. Yep. Poor T-Tar is going to go down. Oh, that means I could have Shadow Balled the Halucha. And then it would have been the 1v1 with Flutter versus Ndidi, and I could have subspanned that. Oh, I had an out here. I didn't choose to take it, though. Yeah, wow. GG's. I mean, Halucha won. Not mine, but a Halucha won. My only thing here is if they decide to Helping Hand again, but they're not. They're going to follow me because that's a bit. Well, I don't live this, so. There's no way I live this acrobatics. Dude, Halucha swept me. I, I I started off the video saying, hey, look at my new Halucha team. And I, I end the video by getting swept by Halucha. <laughs> hey, E, sir. GG's, you got me. And here you have the rental code for the Halucha team. Francisco, thank you so much for making this team public. And congratulations on your finish in EUIC. The fact that Halucha has now earned CP holds a special place in my heart. Now, there were three battles in today's video. One of the battles we really got to showcase Halucha, but I feel like the second battle, we didn't really get to showcase it, but we did get to showcase Sandy Shocks as a Pokemon in Regulation C. Don't sleep on it, because I slept on it, and my opponent slept on it, and it, it took advantage. The fact that we were able to do that much damage to a Don Dozo in either game one, game two, I don't remember, but we did that much damage to a Don Dozo is incredibly impressive. And the fact that Halucha can outspeed even Iron Bundle booster energy boosted is impressive. There are speed tiers that we don't consider and Halucha lives in those speed tiers. So that's kind of the special surprise that you can get on your opponents when it comes to Halucha. Regardless, it's a fun video today. If you guys enjoyed today's video, hit the like button down below and subscribe to Poké Sports if you haven't done so already. I'm Ken Sports. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great night and peace out. Bye-bye. Thank you.